When expressing chemical changes that occur in aqueous solutions in terms of chemical equations, it's sometimes appropriate to express them in terms of what's called the formula unit equation, where you show all the formula units across the chemical change. Sometimes it's more appropriate to show the total ionic equation and other times the net ionic equation. Let's take a look in turn at each one of these representations of chemical change in aqueous solution. In the first case, we have expressing the formula unit equation for this neutralization equation. Hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide react to yield sodium chloride and water. In this case, each one of the compounds is expressed in terms of its formula unit. However, sometimes it's necessary to show exactly what ions exist in solution. And in this case, we would um, represent this particular chemical change using the, what's called the total ionic equation. And to do that, you have to think about what does what are these different compounds and how do they um, exist when they are dissolved in solution. First of all, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so we know that it exists as the chloride anion and the proton that is, of course, hydrated as a hydronium ion, but we can let it exist as a proton for the case of this argument. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so that means it disassociates completely when placed in water, and so it exists as the ion, sodium ion, hydroxide ion. Sodium chloride in solution exists as the sodium ion and the chloride ion, because when the ionic compound dissolves, it separates or disassociates into its ions, and of course, water is a liquid compound that um, exists as a discrete entity. So it's just water, H2O. It doesn't separate into ions. Okay, and so what we want to do then is represent what we know is going on as a total ionic equation. So we would re represent the hydrochloric acid as H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous plus the sodium hydroxide, showing how it exists disassociated, the hydroxide ion aqueous. And then on the other side of the equation, we've got the sodium ion, it's aqueous, the chloride anion, it's aqueous, and then of course the water, I'm going to write it down here because I'm out of space. Okay, so everything exists as an ion except for the water. Um, so in this case, the net ionic equation, you write only the ions that change. The ions that don't change across the chemical change are considered spectator ions. And since it, they look exactly the same on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side of the equation, they're just watching or spectating. The spectator ions are uh, on both sides of the equation. You do not rewrite them in the net ionic. They cross off. So the spectator ion, in this case, the sodium ion, looks the same on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and the chloride anion does as well. So the net ionic equation is everything but the spectator. So the uh, proton changes, it becomes uh, covalently linked to the hydroxide in water. So the net ionic is the net of what's actually changing across the chemical change. It's the hydro uh, hydrogen ion or hydronium ion, because um, it would be hydrated to water, plus the hydroxide anion to give water. So the net is um, the ions that exist on the left-hand side, not the right-hand side, what's actually changing across the chemical change, the net ionic equation.